Thanks again. What time is it actually? It is uh, three fifteen. What time did we? Or so. Yeah, let's stick around. Hey, welcome back to Badger Radio. We're broadcasting from Seattle, um, far from the ocean, but right near the sound. And uh, joined here in the makeshift studio with Dwight Friesen and Tobin Wilson and our musical Terry. guests that I just passed by. Um, Tobin has right. written a book, and it's Ariat Fiate. No, what is it? What is that the title of it? I can't even remember. I know, but it's a sound that sounds something like that. What no, is it? Right. Tell me again. Yeah, it's Arete again. Arete again. Mi subtitled Missional Adventures in Theology and Life. Mm -hmm. It came out uh, 2012. Yes. Uh, and it was uh, probably eight years in the making, honestly, and six years in concept sitting in the mind, and then a couple of years to pull it off, mm -hmm. you know, and write it out. Yeah. And Actually, Arete is a it's a it's a good word. I mean, it's not the greatest title for a book because when you have to explain the title of your book, you're in trouble already. Yeah, you know tell what I'm me saying? About it. I'm over yeah. for seven. Hours. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, McDonald's has how many? F twelve billion hamburgers sold. Mm -hmm. I've sold about twelve copies. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Why don't you give them away on the Kickstarter for that? Uh, yeah, maybe I'll throw it in there. So how you get them out I got of a basement. lot of boxes at home. <laughs> yeah. How you get them? Now, actually, Arete is a word. There's two. Uh, the Northwest is is familiar with one of the words. Uh, the ways to pronounce it, a ret, which is a mountain climbing word. I have no idea what that means. Mm -hmm. It's got something to do with belaying, uh, and I don't even know what that means. Yeah. Uh, rete is a word that it's, uh, it's the cumulative of virtue that you have in, in your life. Uh, so it's, 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 it's bringing mm -hmm. all of mm -hmm. faith, you know, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control into all the virtues roll them into one and that's a rete mm. so it's the it's the finding again of character oh is really why i wrote it yeah and it it, it was a birth out of a couple of things uh, first it was a birth out of a dark place in my life uh, basically coming into as a, as a pastor uh, and an addiction to alcohol and coming out of it and wondering if god was done with me or if i could do something else yet mm -hmm. and a lot of shame around that and a lot of a lot of uh did that just happen, and how did that happen? Yeah, you know, kind of thing. And not only shame, but but true concern that oh, yeah. those issues could stop your career path and. Oh yeah, and career path. One of the only destroy things families destroy and children family. for generations. Yeah. yeah, and I'm that guy now. Mm -hmm. And what do I do with that? Mm -hmm. uh, so, and that was, but that was nine years ago. I've been sober for nine years. Mm -hmm. uh, nine years in uh, February. So. You know, it took a few years for me to almost, in a sense, stabilize and get comfortable again mm -hmm. and trust myself, you know. And then I wanted to write a little bit about the journey. The whole book is not a book on recovery. That's a real small portion of it. But, but the conversation around Arete and virtue, again, uh, begins with a descent into addiction and ascent out of it mm -hmm. and the grace work of God in those lowest of low places. Mm -hmm. So you get a little bit of my comments earlier coming through, and why they're meaningful to me as a person. But a it's little bit of your what comments, you know, about uh, geography of grace. Oh, you're, yeah, your your commentaries, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Um, it's been a few years since I've written the book, so it's hard to remember yeah. what I wrote. Isn't it true? Isn't that funny? I mean, it's amazing how much you can think so much yeah. about something at one period yeah. of, of life. And Be totally immersed. Something happens, and but it, it's. The, one of the strengths of the book is it's hard to categorize. Mm -hmm. One of the weaknesses of the book is mm -hmm. it's hard to categorize. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it, it, it brings together a lot of what we're doing here, frankly. Yeah. Theology, Dwight. Uh -huh. uh, ethics, and I'll explain a little bit of that in a moment. Culture, mm -hmm. grace, uh, and, and relationships. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Doug and I have known each other for a few years. 20 years or something. A couple decades, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's out of uh, kind of the synergy and convergence of those uh, trying to, to develop character again. Uh, it's a love for Trinitarian theology, Jürgen Moltmann. And is there, a way to, is there a way to parlay social trinity in a way that looks at vice and virtue? Mm -hmm. uh, so that's really what the book is about. It's, it's organized in threes. Uh, and it's for every vice, I give it a contemporary name. 
Hmm. And then uh, two virtues that are, in a sense, an, an, an anecdote for that. Mm-hmm. And I weave those together all the way through. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's, that's really what the, what the book's about. It's been pretty well received. Yeah. Yeah. And, and when you know, there's a big push in, in some critique of American religion that there's no difference between Christians and other people that are just moral. Like, it's a really interesting thing, right? There's this funny critique which wants to say, well, Christians should be something more than ethical and moral and good. And I think a lot of us are at a loss for, well, what would that be? <laughs> like, what? So it seems that, that you've, you've, you've tied that together. So, like, you're not bothered by that, by that dilemma. You're not bothered by the... That dichotomy, um, potentially? Yeah, the potential, you know, that struggle that people suggest that, well, you know, you got to be more than just a moral person. Because, like, being a moral person is a freaking hard thing to do. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, it's, it's not like, well, everybody's just right. just moral. But it kind of gets spun out. Do you know what I mean? Or am I the only one that hears that? that yeah, that a little bit. I think, I think the expectation like, for Christians is that the bar is higher. And the bar is higher. And right? I have a high bar, too. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, welcome to the planet. We're human beings as well. Mm-hmm. How do you... How do you allow people to dive into dive into their darkness, and, and I mean this transformationally, dive into their darkest of darkness, uh, their dark places, and really uh, ask the light of Christ to shine in that so that you reemerge again, yeah, transformed, right, uh, different, um, joyful, yeah. <laughs> hopeful, yeah. and you know, and more and more loving too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As, as she just sang. Yeah, so. I mean, those are those are really powerful, yeah. powerful uh, yeah. drivers in our lives is to be is to be those people. Yeah. And anyway, maybe, maybe other people aren't are, are bothered by that notion that, that Christians are supposed to be that, as if that's a gimme, and then some. Yeah. You know. Well, I think I think one of the things you know, I'm I'm one of these guys where I'm in a mainline church, which is interesting. You know, you were t- we were talking about Presbyterians earlier. Yeah. Hi, I'm one. Yeah, yeah you are one. <laughs> and uh, it, it, it's funny, um, you and I got connected in life when we were all about the generations that were, that were coming next mm-hmm. after us. And uh, I still live in that world in my mind in, in so many ways. And, and yet, uh, somehow found my call and identity in, in a mainline church that had plateaued and were declining mm-hmm. and... You know, it's not a pretty sight for main lines right mm-hmm. now. And it, what was interesting, and I've been in the church I'm in now, I've been there for six years, is it possible, and, and I mean this in the, in, a, in the best possible sense, is it possible to honor those that have gone before and connect those that are coming after me and, and in a sense, be a catalyst to bring those together? Mm-hmm. Most folks my age, you know, have long since left the main line. Mm-hmm. You know, they went and did their own thing. They started something different. And I, trust me, I get that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Know? I totally get that. Yeah. And, you know, almost every day I think, what, what am I doing? Why didn't I do that? Yeah. And even guys my age, very few of us now make it to retirement. Mm-hmm. You know, in, in, a mainline, in a mainline setting. Because it's mm-hmm. just too hard trying to connect those two, those two worlds. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so I've, I've, I've been able, or tried to do that going where I'm at right now. Mm-hmm. Doing the best you can. Doing the best I can. Yeah. yeah. But one of, the, one of the things in that move uh, is, uh, you know, when you think of a quintessential mainline congregation, you know, I, I guarantee you images come to mind. Uh, uh, guy in a robe, guy that does not wear earrings, I got two of them. You know, uh, you have certain stereotypes that typically come to mind. And one of those significant uh, mile markers is an inability to be human. Hmm. And so what I've tried to do, at least in my location, my place, is uh, it is really fine to be human. Hmm. Come on in, whoever you are, Mm -hmm. and we're going to walk with you. Uh, And so... You know, I've had a wonderful opportunity to just walk with all kinds of folks in and through in and through addiction, mm-hmm. uh, and you don't hear that very often. Uh, you listen to Doug Badger Radio out of Seattle. This is Tobin Wilson. I realized that the recording stopped earlier, so we're we're back on now. Um, but that was some fine material we just ran right there. Okay. But you, you, your your own story involves recognition of, of addiction. 
Um, and what what role do you think that y your own empathy, your own experience, creating empathy? How important is that, or is that just like that's your your place, but it's not necessarily the place people have to be? Because I feel like sometimes yeah. in churches, like if pastors who did, who don't struggle with addiction don't know how to engage with people who do. You know what I mean? Oh sure. Uh, and those who who struggle with addiction really want to be in a community with other people who, who truly get that. But do, do you think there's, do you think that's also one of those bridging places? I, 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 yeah, I think so. I mean, I think the essence of the incarnate, I think the essence of empathy theologically is grounded and rooted in, <laughs> in incarnation. Yeah. How can I more fully enter into mm -hmm. that person's world? Yeah. You know, and for me, and I know, I wouldn't wish this on everybody. <laughs> yeah. For me, you know, I found it, I found it an, an amazing, humbling, awesome place to be able to go with people hmm. Hmm. Uh, in words that I, in, in ways I never would have imagined had I not mm -hmm. gone through that myself. Yeah. Uh, there, there's a that, thing in, there's a thing in of science of. called, um, in, in particle physics science anyway, which I'm sort of into right now, so it's interesting to me, but it's called entanglement. And the idea is that when a particle is created uh, with another particle, they're connected, and you can separate them even by distance, you know, miles across the planet, across the cosmos, if you want it. And what happens to one particle will happen simultaneously to the other. Not the speed of light. There's no information traveling. They're entangled. They're connected. And there's people who study these things. You know, they tell me that they yeah. uh, they can't be argued with. They tell me that um, all of the cosmos is actually that way. Everything is connected to something else. Because from one place of impulse of becoming, everything, all that is, comes from that same thing, right? Whether, however, one wants to understand that, and so everything is is inter interlaced and connected. So empathy, as it turns out, is is for the people who like to go down this road, is that it's not it's not the extra thing you do; it's the recognition of what actually is. That's right. right. So when you're empathetic, you're in other words, it's dawning on you that that's you too. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. Which is a different way than, sure. than like charitable, yeah, charitableness. Right. You know, right. which is I think what you're what you're saying that now it's yeah. There's a there's an, in, an innateness. There's a communal, yeah. a community. You know, for the Trinitarians, they really like that Trinity language because it gives you a structure of connectedness. But um, it's that same kind of thing, right? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 That that it's it's not just that you're being thoughtful of those people you're like no that really no I've lived that yes you know I am you you are me that's right yeah I was talking with a, a pastor friend of mine <clears throat> over the weekend um, who had spent a lot of his time working with uh, the trafficked and prostituted population of Seattle mm -hmm. uh, a lot of folks who are in, in various huge. it is really significant um, and also with it, a fairly n fair number of people who are dealing with different kinds of uh, chemical addictions and so on and one of the people I was with asked him um, about, about that connect. I mean, how does he feel that connection? He's like, D I mean, have you struggled with addiction? And you know, those kinds of questions mm -hmm. uh, as he, uh, as a leader in that, in that space. And he said, you know, the more I, w I get to work with my neighbors and friends in this who are, who are in these different realms, the more I find myself in them. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, it's like uh, until I hang out with ad addicts, um, I didn't even know the kind of addiction that I had in my own life, and it's like mm. somehow my own salvation is linked in being with them, with with with, with these neighbors, and I, all of a sudden I see myself in ways that I never could have seen before, mm. and that just being in relationship like that has has invited him to a sort of a, a I don't know deeper I don't know what the right word mm -hmm. I don't know what word he would use, but I just found myself taken by that like mm -hmm. where are the needful relationships that I'm living into. It actually helped me to see myself in, in that deeper way, in that place of solidarity, mm -hmm. or the term that you use for the entanglement. 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 Mm -hmm. That's like right. to think of myself as entangled in solidarity yeah. with the yeah. other, yeah. whoever that yeah. other is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's a different kind of transformation, right? Like there's the kind of transformation where you begin with the assumption that you don't have, and you need to create the capacity for right, it, right, which is whatever. Um, and then there's the kind of transformation which is discovery oriented, mm -hmm. where you're beginning to find your, the, the part of you that, that, that always has been, mm -hmm. right? and mm -hmm. you're, so you're transformed by that 
by that kind of discovery. You know? exactly. And I'm, I'm not yeah. a very reflective person myself. Like I don't. That's that's not my temperament, right? Is to spend. I don't. I don't journal. Like like there are no <laughs> records of my feelings. They don't exist. <laughs> like they've never been captured anywhere. Um, that's not my. That, that's not my way. Um, but and so I'm not just saying that. You know, just for those of us you know who know how to sort of traffic in those in those um, that kind of development. But mm. but this sense that when we meet someone else and when we're engaging with someone mm -hmm. else or in someone else's experience with, uh, along with our own, we'll, that that's not just a mirror. I mean, it kind of becomes like a mirror, though. Mm -hmm. And I'd imagine you said something earlier, which uh, maybe people didn't hear, but it was y your, the person you became, that those depths that you could go to, that wasn't something you would have gone to before or maybe even would have scared you before or sure. been undesirable and then became became you and it, there seems to be this history with a, a lot of us right like it, in some of the Christian sort of world people will say things like you know don't don't ever say you won't do something like you know go live in some other country you know, because that would be just precisely the thing that you'll end up doing and more to it that it seems to me than, than just that there's some divine presence that's just ornery and likes to do that to people. That the thing that scares us mm -hmm. is familiar. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. um, and that thing that is so other is really only so other because it's... It's tapping into that fear or something. That somehow we we're entangled with it yes. and we don't know yeah. yet what that will mean. Yes. Um, and so, somehow so, surrendering to that yes. holds something for us. Yeah. Yeah. And so I've wondered a lot about that. Like, mm -hmm. Because then it gives credit... It gives some credence to the the fear of the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not, not to be overly psychological about it, but we are at the Seattle School of Theology <laughs> and Psychology. We are trying to bring those things together. I mean, this is all they do around this room. Is they're out here waiting for the, yeah, it's all we do. Waiting for the three gongs. Yeah. To tell you that. yeah when is that gong yeah. coming on? By the way, these are. You know, I mean, it, these it, it occurs to me. To remember, God's around here. They yeah. have a gong every three hours to tell them. <laughs> Well, you know, it occurs to me, you know, I wonder, I'm just, you know, I'm wondering if mm -hmm. most of what we talk about as transformation mm -hmm. in, a, in, a, in a Christian sense is, is really not that. It's yeah. just me having a moment of growth. Yes. And what we're talking about here is really what is transformation. Transformation is when we're so entangled with one another that when yeah. we leave this place today, we're all different. Yeah, yes. Right. And that's transformation, uh -huh. from a from a, you know, trinitarian sense. Uh, anything else? If I'm just sitting in the corner and I'm uh, I'm praying, yeah, I'm just having a moment. Right. I might call it transformation. I might have an encounter, but transformation is all of us leaving different than mm -hmm. when we began. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's that's true. That's true. Kingdom of God transformation. Right. And I think it has missiological implications too. I'm, mm. you know, I'm just I'm just grooving on what you're doing here because I'm one of those guys that. Um, is in is in a neighborhood that's literally trying to engage with our neighborhood and be neighborly, mm -hmm. and transformation there can only take place to the extent that I'm I'm in a relationship with the neighbors, and as a result of that neighbor that that relationship, we're all different at the yeah. end of the day. Yeah. That's true transformation. Anything else? We just might be. I'm. I'm a public. I'm delivering public. Uh, I'm a public service representative. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I'm delivering services mm -hmm. to the community, which is good. We all need World Vision and Red Cross, and we all yeah. need food, water. But true missiological transformation. We're all different mm -hmm. as a result of our encounter together. And in, in, in part because, in some ways, I'll, you talked earlier about the incarnation being the key. I think that that's so right because. Incarnation invites us in, in, to imagine what embodiment and presence looks like. And any time we talk about embodiment, we're talking about particularity and limitations, hmm. right? And so somehow, the particularity and limited being that I am in real place, in real time, in relationship with another, um, has something, that there's something there pregnant in that togetherness that's hmm. necessary for both of us. One of the challenges, I think, that's, you know, there's been a lot written in the last few years about being missional. Mm -hmm. One of the challenges that we're being, I mean, one of the things we're beginning to see about sort of a lot, some of the missional language is that it has had a tendency within communal life mm -hmm. to, end, to, to form churches that are issue-driven 
or that have taken on a project and, and you know, partnered with a school or partnered with mm -hmm. a, an organization in some other part of the world and has located it out there, mm. as opposed to somehow thinking about, like, what is the, the, the formative practice of being such mm -hmm. that that mission, presence, relationship, the, the gift of our limitations are brought up to each other, bumped, bumping into each other, yeah. that mutual transformation is inevitable. Mm. If it's not mutual transformation, it's a form of soft colonialism. Yeah. Mm. And, and the church is still trafficking in that right. realm to a huge degree. Mm. And we've got, to, we've got to think about that more, more. We've got to allow our Christology to shape our practice. Yeah, I, I can't agree. With, I can't agree with you anymore. Uh, I, you know, I, I can't agree anymore with you than that. I mean, I think you're right. Most of what we do in the church, under the rubric and semantic of missional, is let me do this for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the reality of the kingdom of God is, what does it mean to be in life together? Mm -hmm. How do how will we do this together? Mm -hmm. Now, so let me do it for you, but how do we do it with one another, there's together? A, there's a notion I heard today for the first time. I've never heard this phrase. Maybe you've heard it before. And, you know, I'm late to the party. There's a thing called heart math, like your heart and math. Do you know about this at all? No. It's, it's the idea. It comes from this premise that apparently can be, can be studied. That every, the presupposition is that every person's, sort, every person has sort of a field of force around them, sort of a heart heartbeat and that there's a particular rhythm to that and part of this heart math business is that you can determine what that is and when you're around someone else that heartbeats will start to syncopate and they'll start to come together and that these mm. forces so as one moves through through the world there really is a connection sure. to other people and you know it's like not to be crass but it's like you know young it's like girls that go to college for the first time that. and they live yeah. in a sorority. I was just yeah. going to say, all of a sudden that. they're like, seriously, like how can we all be menstruating at the yeah. same yeah. time? Right? Like <laughs> yeah, I have a wife and three <laughs> girls. Yeah, well, like they just get on the same. Sorry, or, or like when my son yeah. was when he, when he was younger and he was trying to fall asleep and I would rub his back and I would try to uh -huh. rub his back with the heartbeat mm -hmm. with the rhythm of his heartbeat and yeah. then slowly slow down. Yeah. So that you know, yeah, and they see people laying in bed together that their hearts start to do this and that they start to syncopate in that way, so they become into this way. That's a different kind of incarnation. Right? Yes. That's a, that's a, right. seems to be a better way of like that, that, yes. that heartbeat. And this is where, from, from my theology, God doesn't exist in community distinguished from creation. Sure. God is the fabric of all. There's nothing outside of or absent of God. There's no place that that isn't. So a, a community or a person contributes to the rhythm of God as much as God contributes to the rhythm of humanity. And that's what implicates mm. us even more greatly in this world, right? So that mm. that raises this whole ethical standard mm -hmm. because when one doesn't, when, when one breaks the heartbeat, yes, yeah. not just breaks the heart, but like lives out of rhythm um, and damages that yeah. it doesn't just damage people, it damages damages God. I mean, for, for yeah. me, I have no, I have no, no qualms about that kind of thing. So, so this kind of syncopation of life is really an interesting notion or understanding or, or lens yeah. or something to, to, to see the world. Hmm. No, I, I, fit that re I mean, it, it resonates. I mean, it's yeah. a similar kind of method. Yeah, and then there's resonation, yeah. That, you know, that, like, which, like there's, some, there's some harmony in you and right, there's some harmony right. somewhere else. And now, how we articulate that theologically within our various traditions may take on different forms, but, yeah. but I think there's something about... Mm, that's interesting. You know, like, mm. so like depending on one's tradition, you may have to sort of nuance that in a way that the person could receive it. But to, yeah. to, I, to think that how we are in the world is either participating with or some somehow contributing to a fragmentation or a separation mm -hmm. or a out of rhythm beat. Mm -hmm. I mean, that just sounds fairly consistent with what the invitation seems to be in scripture. Yeah. Like how do you participate with the, with flourishing of life or yeah. kingdom mm -hmm. realities or shalomic rhythms or it right. sounds very know. musical too it does oh yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. It it does. Does. about that a little bit yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know um, just the idea of, of people coming together to, to make music or to play together and, mm. and that, that the beats start to line up when you're mm. like I just when you were talking about it I just imagined the people coming to a song you know or yeah. to create something and the person I, I was talking about this with today said that and she said it in a way that sounds like it's probably a known thing. 
but if you put a group of, of ticking clocks, grandfather clocks, analog digital clocks, or analog clocks in a room, um, that over the course of a day, they will start to tick at the pacing of the loudest clock. Wow. So even these mm. other kinds, I mean, even non-human, mm. right? I mean, the idea being it's not just a choice that you're making. Like, it's not a social ordering where, like, you're giving up a little something because that other person has power, and so you're making a decision subconsciously or consciously to do that these non... Yeah, there's something that, when you brain. say that, okay, as I, I'm just brainstorming here, just <laughs> riffing a bit, but if we, there's something about the idea that those clocks have to be analog. That strikes me. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you have a quartz movement that's battery powered, it's not going to get on sync. Yeah. Is there something for us to wonder mm -hmm. about practices that, in some ways, are more analogically analog? Yeah. Is there? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, right. I don't is know. Is there some exchange is, or something? Because right. you can sort of imagine why a clock, because that tick is actually sending a wave. It actually is. There's, that's right. It, there's something yeah. that's that's passing where in the digits. Um, and I, I don't know. I just yeah. it, it but then there's this, these, these studies and this this whole like issue of in, of intentionality around entanglement, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the scientists trying to figure this out. Like, do intentions mean anything? And apparently, there's these studies with these clickers. So they'll ask people to hold these clickers, and to every time they push the button, it sends out a series of ones and zeros in little packets, so a thousand ones, and then five zeros, and then ten thousand ones, and fifty thousand zeros, just wh whatever random sets of ones and zeros, and every time you click. So they have people clicking and clicking. And they ask one group of people to intend to send more ones, and another group to intend to send more zeros, and one group just do it randomly. And the random group, it's random, and the ones group are slightly more ones, and the zeros group are slightly more And they more have zeros. no control. Wow. They have, they have no control. They're, they're just, just, just randoming. They're just, they don't even know, it's not connected in. You're just pushing <laughs> Get the button. Get out of here. You're just wow. pushing the button. And there's this, and they keep doing these tests, and they keep doing these tests, and there's just degrees to all of yeah. this. Huh. That somehow there's some intentionality, that somehow we, what we intend or what our effort is, seems, starts to, seems to make a difference. Starts to create a, huh. a reality that's not there. I mean, it's very, yes. right? I mean, you know, all of a sudden, you know, this is when, this is when so Tom like, Cruise and the game. Yeah, you begin like, thinking, hey, yeah, that's what we've been talking about. <laughs> that's right. What does yeah, it mean to all those? those Look in the 1950s, you know, yeah. 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 with a curse and you bless instead. Yeah, I mean, yeah. right. There's something about that that's really uh -huh. intriguing. Like, can just those stances, those postures, even that mm -hmm. we take, right? Uh, even if we can't affect the kind of change that we would want to change, mm -hmm. can, does that actually contribute to the changing of the ethos in some way? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does it? Do, do we create the very realities yes. that we live in as much as live? And that research would seem to suggest, yeah. Yeah, you know, lots of sure. You know, there's there's very simple versions yeah, of yeah, that, yeah. which is you know, you 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 don't have because you don't ask. Right. Right. I mean, just which is something that that in a transactional kind of you know in a Newtonian right. transactional view of God's world, mm -hmm. Jesus saying something like, "Well, you have not for you ask not." Mm -hmm. And I don't know who talks like that. Who listens to somebody who talks like that? But anyway, to say something like that can seem very much like that's ridiculous. How yeah. could you? Mm -hmm. But if the asking is somehow a part of the creating process, well, and asking, not just a determined world that someone's parsing out. And asking is always linked to imagination. Mm -hmm. You would never be able to ask for something that you can't imagine to be true. Yeah. And so until you can begin to imagine reconciliation where mm -hmm. there's division, how could you ever ask for it? Mm -hmm. you know, so what is it to begin imagining a world in which yeah. mm -hmm. there is, there is, uh, there, we're living into heart math and rhythms? Yeah. And beginning to like posture ourselves in such a way that we are speaking that kind of blessing, and maybe living into it in such a way that that might actually contribute to, right. to a whole. May your will be done on earth as, as it, it is in heaven. heaven. Like yeah. this yeah. kind of thing starts yes. to sound. Did that happen like with the the was it the three minute mile or whatever that it was you know for four I, minute, I, minute four mile, minute yeah. mile where mm -hmm. it was like it was impossible like yeah. impossible no mm -hmm. one's gonna be able to do it yeah and then it took you know how like long time yeah. and then, again this is a very analog thing yeah. making a body go as fast as you know. And then it happened, and yep. then very quickly after that, yes. it just kept, kept getting broken, 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 over broken. Over and over and over. Just yep. it, it wasn't, and it wasn't steroids. Yeah. You know? right. <laughs> it, not yet. You like, know? Like so in the same week. In yeah, the same it, it was summer, just kind of this, like oh, it, it can happen. Yes. Oh, 
Once it did, well, that was easy. It the threshold. It became, it became, in fact, yeah. the, I saw something in the, the, during the Olympics about, about this, where they don't show Olympics; they show things about Americans during the Olympics. You know. <laughs> anyway, so there was these yeah. stories about you know Americans, and um, they were noting Bob Costas noted that while they don't have a one mile race now in the Olympics, it's the fifteen hundred meter or whatever. So it's within a few seconds that the four minute mile that pace over that same basically that, that same distance, um, that four minute mile, you wouldn't even have qualified for the current Olympics. Like not only was it broken, it's now not even close to being a standard any longer. Yeah. And it's hard to imagine yeah. that human beings have just simply physically changed that much. I mean, that was 40 years ago. Like the guy who broke the, the four minute miles, like he's alive. He's alive. He's roaming around. You know. I mean, it's not like it's yeah, not like slower, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's, he's slowed down considerably. I, I hear. Yeah, but that's that whole question of, of imagination, and this is true of so many of these of these kinds of realities. You know, but then it can be a little. This is what has made a whole generation of baby boomers really disillusioned, right? Mm -hmm. You know, not to be all Jackson Brown here, you know, from the Pretender, but um, you know, whatever became of all those dreams that that people had. There was a sense that we could imagine a new future, and now you know mm -hmm. you end up with, you know, Mitt Romney being 75 votes in Ohio away from being the president of the United States. That just doesn't seem conceivable. Uh, right? I'm really struggling right now. With that. Oh, I'm yeah. dying. You're hurt. And I voted for Republicans. I voted for Bush. I, that, yeah. That's not it. It's just guys like that. I'm gonna rant for a second. Yeah. Okay. Guys like that. What's the like that? The private equity guys. Mm -hmm. Don't. You don't get to go from being that guy to being the one who's going to now play this very yeah. peculiar role in our society. Yeah. There's just some jobs you don't get to have done previously, in my view, yeah. and now get to be that guy. Like, I don't get to be president because, yeah. for lots of reasons, but <laughs> first and foremost, I have expressed a religious commitment and perspective that I think would make it very hard for people without that to trust that I could have their best interest at heart. I think I could, but I think, well, once you've picked certain commitments, you just don't get to then play that role. Mm -hmm. Hugh Hefner doesn't get to be the, the president, doesn't get to run for that. You don't get to do what he did, you know, and then run for president, in my view. I don't get to do it. A, a former Navy SEAL who was a sniper and killed people, you just, then you don't get to have that job and now be the president. It's and, kind of the erect conversation, and right? And being a private equity guy, that's the first on the list. You don't right. get to be the guy who extracts profit and then wants to yeah. set, to be in charge set of the it agenda. All. Yeah. I, it's just, I, I mean, am I the only one here that's just like, seriously, no. there are jobs that I you mean, don't... I mean, cumulative virtue, like you're saying, it's is cumulative. It, it, like what, it, what kind of life is being formed over time? Yeah. yeah. And is that, does that formation uh, form a person so that they can have a national interest mm -hmm. at heart? Yeah, and it's not that, it's not, are you qualified or whatever? Yeah. It's it's something. I mean, there's a whole question of that, perhaps. But anyway, yeah, that that, that, that shouldn't character. that shouldn't bug me so much. No, I think it should. You're, you you live here. Yeah, it's mine too. It's yeah. yeah. And if I don't get to be president, then some private equity guy sure does. <laughs> 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 It'd be interesting. I mean, the, I mean honestly, honestly, they're the they're, they're the worst. I often say that in religious environments where where you have to dress in a certain um, 1920s kind of fashion sensibility, right? <laughs> suits and all mm -hmm. that. I'm like, that's how bankers dress. Why would we wear the clothes of those guys? Mm -hmm. my mom always and not all bankers are bad we're, we're putting on our best for Jesus. Yeah. That's what my mom always <laughs> yeah, well, Jesus has a few things to say to the money lenders <laughs> <laughs> and, to the, and to the bankers. All right. Uh, you want to say anything else, anybody? Or did I totally derail that right at the end? Yeah, it's just, um, we're having such a great conversation. I had to obsess about it. Love you, man. Pastor so Mitt. Your last couple weeks to do that, right? That's right. Yeah, I just, I just really hope this is this is a great song by a musician that you guys won't um, honor, so I won't tell you his name, but it's called Living in the Future, and the whole thing is, like, we're living in the anxiety that's in front of us, and none of that stuff has happened yet, and you don't have to get all wound up. You're, you're currently living in the future, and it's going to be okay. But he wrote that because he didn't want George Bush to win, and then George Bush did win. So it gets really yeah. confusing you know, <laughs> like that. So um, let's not have that intention. Yes, <laughs> see, <laughs> see intentions. And send your five dollars, but not uh, not for a TV ad for an album. All right, all right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, live from Seattle, back uh, back next week in Minneapolis, which is.
just boring people. So um, enjoy this while you've got Frank Badger Radio Live from Seattle. Thank you, Tobin. Thank you. Thank you, Tara. Thank, Thank you, you, Nathaniel. Thank you, Dr. Friesen. Thanks. Dwight Friesen, are you a doctor? I am a doctor. You are a doctor. Well, you got to rub that in every time. Reverend, you? It used so to be Reverend Doctor. I'm a Reverend Doctor. Not reverend anymore. Oh, you remember you do that? Doctor for me? I am no, I think doctor. Reverend Doctor Tony. Yeah, Reverend Tobin. Doctor Tobin Wilson. But I'm not into titles. Just go to TobinWilson.com and you can buy a book. <laughs> <laughs> or Amazon, Kindle version either. Buy two, they make great Christmas gifts. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate it. Buy ten. Right. Yeah, right. I'm thirsty. I want right. a Starbucks. And stop lending them to people. <laughs> it's like, it's how come musicians are the only people that get to be like, hey, don't distribute my material to everybody else, but you've got libraries <laughs> giving except, out books yeah. to people. Except we're doing that. But you're doing it, yeah. Uh, well, good for you. At least you're honest. Thanks, Doug. At least there's an honest musician around. Yeah. Thanks for your show, um, too. By the way, you're welcome. Thank you. Have you guys seen, and listeners, I just saw it the other day, a, a daily show bit on the last honest man in America. I think a, I've a heard about it. Lewis Black it. bit. Yeah. Right, so no. you should go look that up. Okay. That is, don't have your children around when you watch <laughs> it. Yeah. It, is, it is unbelievable. So from the last honest people in Seattle, and that'll be funny if you listen to all the way to the. You watch the rest of that uh, <laughs> signing off. We'll see you next week from Minneapolis.